Hello everyone and welcome to Hydrogen at Home. Um, this is a little bit special this video, uh, mainly because it's now been pretty much exactly one year since I did my first hydrogen test with those um, stainless steel sink strainers. And a lot's happened in the last few days. Um, I have gone and got myself broadband internet, finally, and I've been watching a lot of videos there's still a heap more to watch. I can't believe how many have appeared in the last six months. Um, people have been doing a lot of work out there. I wanted to show some things that I've been meaning to do for a long time. First one is this container all sealed up and bolted together. And two cells running at the same time. I know that, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of my other stuff, you'll notice that I talked about uh, when you have two cells in the water at the same time they seem to draw less amperage than when you add them up uh, when they're running separately. I wanted to put all this together so that I could see whether or not that translated into more gas or not. The short answer is no. Um, basically the test showed that even though together they were drawing slightly less amps, um, they were also putting out slightly less gas. So at the end of the day it worked out exactly the same. Um, no improvement and it didn't get better or worse regardless so that's that one taken care of next thing uh, water and connectors and a new cell over here um, kudos to uh, Zero Fossil Fuels I've been watching quite a lot of his videos and his um, design has led me to create that cell there which I'll show you in a sec you can see how the water in this tank is, is a little bit murky. This water is exactly the same as this water. There is there's no difference. I've put them in at the same time. I've run them for about the same time. The big difference is the terminals and connectors. Now, I know I've already talked about this and everyone probably already knows about it, but just to reinforce it, uh, the tap water is not what's causing this, this water to go murky and, and brown. It's the copper and the bad leads and the connectors and the clips and all that kind of stuff. Um, over in this container here, there is none of that. Um, it's bolted on, the bolts are above the water, the cables are all soldered with, I can show you these leads over here I guess, they're all soldered with a lead free solder, so there's no lead in it, and then where the plastic meets the metal, that is also sealed up with a glue, with a resin. Um, and that seems to have fixed the water problem, even with tap water. I'm sure it'll go murky eventually, but nothing compared to what this is doing. Anyway, I'll uh, turn this off and wire up this other container and show you what that looks like. You can just hear it going off its head. One minute's worth of bubbles. Um, by the way, I also did tests on hot water versus cold water and found no difference. Um, basically, I matched the amps um, when it was hot to when it was cold and found no increase in production. So, that's that. Uh, the only difference with heat is that it drives up the amps which in turn drives up the production. So, um, if this was to go and be in a car or something like that, it would have to have some kind of controller to back that off once uh, the heat, heat, you know, ramped it up. That could be either, you know, some voltage thing or um, some cells that turn off, or you could use a, you know, pulse frequency relays and all that kind of stuff. I'm unfortunately I'm not an electrician, so. can't go into that too much. Okay, so that's it. Okay, I've turned it off and it was sitting um, on about 13 and a half amps and you probably can't see that but it's roughly 560 550 odd milliliters is right up here and 13 
and half, 14 amps is right about where my thumb is. So basically that dot there is what we just saw in that test. You can see how much difference it is. I mean, there's no denying it. You can't even, you know, yeah, I don't even have to say anything. Okay, so there it is out of the water. Um, I think I might call this the home cell. Well, uh, you know, this is hydrogen at home, and it does look a bit like a house with a chimney. So the home cell will do. Uh, it is just a test cell, so um, it doesn't matter too much. Uh, basically, it's, I already told you before, but it's basically one positive and one negative with three neutrals in between, and it's completely covered on all sides with plastic, except for the small opening at the top and the small opening at the bottom. Uh, it's all glued together with two-part aldite. Look, the glue pushes my side might be better. Pushes in between the plates to keep them um, separated properly. And I'm not keen on glue. Um, this aldite will break down eventually in the water until the whole thing just falls apart. And apparently there are better glues, such as um, a marine glue. But even then, I'm not that keen on the idea. The new design I'm going to work on will involve no glue at all. Uh, it'll all basically screw together with um, stainless steel screws. Um, up here, these terminals, at the moment they're just wrapped in tape. That will be uh, completely sealed with something like heat shrink eventually. Um, the idea of running these straps right the way up to the top of the water and then having the bolt system or what I'm not particularly keen on mainly because I have tested cells in the water with these str straps running right down before and didn't get the best um, transfer of current through it. Uh, stainless steel isn't the best at transferring current, so I'll probably end up using some cables similar to this, maybe a bit better again, with this lead-free solder and, the, the, and sealed up, and then that whole thing where it bolts onto here will be, or maybe not even bolted, maybe, done in some other way, it will be all covered up with, as I said, something like heat shrink or something like that. Just to get the, you know, the bulk of the power as close to the cell as possible. Okay, what you can see here is uh, my girlfriend's old car. She just got a new car, so she has donated this one to me to do whatever I want with. Uh, over in the background over there you can see my truck, which I'll show you in a sec. This is um, a Ford Laser. A uh, pretty basic uh, car. It's a carburetor. Uh, it has new battery and a new alternator, which you just got. So that's a bonus. And um, this will be my first test car, uh, just so that I don't stuff up my truck in case it doesn't go exactly how I want it to go. Okay, this is my truck. It's an old ex ambulance F100 uh, Ford. And is a dual fuel truck even though it hasn't run on petrol for quite a while the petrol pump has a leak in it so it's been running purely on LPG for quite a while um, for that reason it has an oil dripper uh, this is called flash lube that drips uh, consistently into the top of the engine keeping it all lubricated um, which could be a real bonus feature with uh, running the hydrogen to keep the engine nice and lubed up. It had air conditioning at one stage. You can see the big compressor here. And um, that is an awesome thing in a way because my idea for this truck would be to take this off altogether and replace it with an industrial, or not industrial, but a heavy duty uh, alternator, possibly even a 24 volt one. Um, this alternator down here is a heavy duty alternator already. It has just been rebuilt and it also has a new battery. So both of these cars have new alternators and new batteries. Um, adding the extra alternator I know may take a little bit of power out of the engine but I can't imagine it pulling any more than 5% of power out of the engine and the gain that I would get back in hydrogen would be far more than that so I'm not too concerned about that and I can still use some of the power from the existing power supply and alternator and whatnot as well. So yeah, that's my truck. There's plenty of space for whatever kind of container I'd really ever want to put in here. Um, probably this space here. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. It's going to be a while before I get to anywhere near to that stage. I need to make some money and blah blah blah. But yeah, 
Sladčaje.